time my life feels still Time to get up that quick big heel of hope So, what's going on? Oh my God, that's what I was saying this morning when I got to work today. Woohoo! Y'all are listening to Grammy Mary, and it is a Freaker Friday. And let me tell you, it has been a freaky ass Friday. Holy shit. <laughs> I've had a day, and I even was in a good mood and was fueling on, or fueling, yeah, <laughs> running on all cylinders this morning on the way to work until I had a detour. Hi, I'll get to that here in just a bit, but I got to say, hey, what's going on, y'all? Hope you're having an absolutely awesome day. It is blustery out here in Booneyville, and you are listening to me on RLM Radio, also on the RLM Spreaker channel, and I have no idea what the other ones are. Grimmy said I'm on a couple other channels as well, and it's like, holy crap, Anoli, there might be, you know, um... <laughs> Who's singing that version? That's uh, Four Non Blondes, sweetheart. And I was singing along with it, but I didn't have my mic turned on, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Although I don't do too bad, at least according to my kids. I don't do too bad, but no, I don't need to inflict that on you guys. In any case, yeah, uh, several channels that I'm going out there on. Grammy's little rocket chair here and I've been a rocking and a rolling and I was rocking to that song because I absolutely love that song I probably ought to turn my volume up just a skosh turn it up just a skosh there I go there I go can you hear me better now can you hear me now okay yeah I thought it was a rather appropriate song actually today Vince <laughs> okay let me see who do I have on fakey book I don't think I have anybody peeking in on fakey book yet um and it looks like I got Grimmy over here on that FN site uh Mr. Brendan B is over here and so is W or HWR which is Hitler was right and well you know it depends um hi there Rob works so much trivial bu bullshit yeah bullshit rat shit bat shit dirty little snot 69 assholes tied in a knot <gasps> Ha! Huh. Bet you wanted to hear that, didn't you? Hi, Mary B. I see you, sweetheart. How you doing this evening? Um, or this morning for you, I guess, seeing as how you're down under. And you're on the other side of the international dateline. And y'all on that side of the international dateline have been having some rumbly bumblies. Not necessarily you, but Nort of you has been having some really serial rumbly bumblies. Okay, let me see. Do I have anybody else? I don't see anybody else here. So I'll go over to the RLM and say, hey, what's going on? Um, <laughs> I see Asmo. Hi there, Asmo. How you doing, sweetheart? I also see Barman, as well as Cowboy Tech. Hey, sweetheart, you hearing pleasant voices this evening? I sure as heck hope you are. I also see Grimner. Da, 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 da. Yes, Grimner is the creator of RLM and Barman, but don't tell Barman. He thinks he's autonomous. I also see the lovely Moose Girl. She's going to be on later on this evening with Grimner, and they're going to be having a freaktastic freaker ball later this evening. Actually, you'll get about an hour breather, which means you can take your meds, all that fun shit between me and uh, the freaker's ball, because, yeah, you just might need some meds after listening to me. Nem no. I also see the lovely Kate is here as well as Remnant 420. Hey, sweetheart, does that mean you're smoking the butt of the roach? You know, Remnant 420. Uh uh. But um bump bump. I also see trust no one. I trust everyone, darling. And I trust them all to behave exactly as they deem fit. Most of the time that's not beneficial for a lot of other people. Or at least I can't say most of the time. I should say sometimes. But if you are a politician or a politic involved in politics, which is many bloodsuckers, don't you know? Um, yeah, if you're a politician, I'm sure I will trust you to be an absolute douchebag. Although, 
You know, back in the day, douchebags weren't necessarily a bad thing. And then they grew legs and ran for office. Wasn't a good thing. Supposed to be for cleaning things out, but yeah. Now all they do is clean out your bank account. You hear that flushing sound? That's that's it. anything you ever thought of owning and going down the toilet. I also see IB Don C is here. Hey there, sweetheart. How things in your world? And looky there, Java, 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 Java Doctor 2, the new and improved version. And uh, how's that lovely little Lily doing, hun? I hope she's doing wonderful. I also see Juana Taco. Mmm, sounds lovely, but you know what? I had pizza. I had pizza. Pizza, pizza. I'm the pizza, Steve. Hey, and looky there, Solvener is still logged in, but I'll bet you Solvener is catching some Z's. <laughs> I know. I see you, rascal. I love you too, baby girl. And speaking of Z's, I see a Vins here in the chat. How you doing, darling? Awesome show earlier today from what I got to listen to it. I kept getting phone calls and and I know I was at work. It's like, duh, that's part of your job is answer the phone. But today it was rather unusual phone calls. And yeah, I'll get to that here in a bit as well. I also see Chalcedony is here as well as yours truly. I'm kind of sort of here. Well, physically I'm here. Although from some of the things that I have been watching and listening to lately, I think I'm just here physically because I think I'm here physically. Oh, quantum physics. Yay. I'm not going to get too deep into that because, wow, that shit gets really deep. It gets so deep that when you go into a black hole, you come out the other side and you look back and you see things. Whoo, kind of cool. I also see the lovely Mary B is over here as well. Hey there, lady. Hope you're doing awesome. And there's Oslo. Oz. You know, that makes you want to go, Oh. You know, when you do that, if you've got a ringing in your ear, you have to do it for a while. But if you keep doing that, when you've got a ringing in your ear, you'll no longer hear the ringing in your ear. You'll just hear yourself going, oh. And speaking of weird noises, <laughs> to round out the crew over here in the RLM chat, I see Space Wolf. Long time no see, darling. How you doing? Hope you're doing absolutely splendiferous. <coughs> Excuse me. I got a wee bit choked up. Um, oh, God dang. Cat fur. Oh, you know, that's almost as bad as like, you know, having that, seeing a spider and then you got that creepy crawly feeling for the rest of the day. Yeah. Cat hair. Whoa. On my nose. Yes, I love you, baby girl, but your claws hurt. Ow. Okay. My day started out totally freaktastic. I'm driving into work, and I drive in on the old highway and uh, get to the uh, junction where the golf course is and all that other fun stuff. Great big grain elevator. Yeah, I'm out here in Booneyville. We have grain elevators out here. That's the only kind of elevators we have out here because there ain't no buildings that require elevators out here. Okay, I take that back. The courthouse has a basement, and for those that cannot navigate stairs, there is an elevator. Uh, but I think that's probably it. Um, in any case, I'm driving in town and there is a truck blocking the highway. And I thought, what the hell? Doesn't look like an accident or nothing. <coughs> and there's a state worker standing there holding a sign saying, stop. See, I can read even from a distance. And, well, it helps that it was red and octagonal. But... You know, that's a universal kind of thing, or at least over here it is. In any case, I see this and I'm thinking, some bitch, you guys got one of them damn oversized load things coming and I need to go around. So I decided, okay, I'll take the circuitous route. I will take a turn. I'll go left turn, Clyde, and I'll go by the elevator. <coughs> Excuse me, as opposed to just staying on a highway. Well, I get across railroad tracks, and there's no state truck blocking the southbound lane. And I'm thinking, what the hell? What's going on? What's going on, people? Goddamn. So, I start driving into town. 
I get to work. Ouch. And I see a state truck blocking the intersection of Highway 40 and Highway 83 right there by where I work. And I'm thinking, what the hell? I don't remember seeing any. And there's no ambulance. I don't hear no sirens. What the hell? So, going to work. And everybody's going, what the hell's going on? <laughs> As if I would know. I, I'm the, yeah, I just work there. In any case, um, yeah, we're wandering around, kind of wondering what the fuck. Excuse me, F-bomb, 14 minutes in. Who won the raffle tonight? Um, and I see uh, one of the Midwest Energy guys, which, you know, they're natural gas, electricity, yada, yada, yada. So I go out to talk to him because I see nobody is over at the quick trip. And that's very unusual this early in the morning. So I went over and I asked him and he said, there's something going on about two blocks west of here. Hi, Chalcedony. I see you smiling, sweetheart. And um, he said that he wasn't allowed to go any closer than where he was at, which was basically two and a half blocks away. And uh, another Midwest guy come in. He had to go and shut off power to the residents. Apparently, there was a domestic dispute that started at about 2 in the morning. The sirens started going off because one of my mechanics lives just, I mean, half a block away from work. And uh, he heard the sirens going by at six this morning and then they he got a phone call at seven saying get out of your house lock your doors yada 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 we have an incident and so people are starting to freak and if any of you know small town usa rumors started flying let me tell you i was getting phone calls is there really a bomb threat going on i was really surprised you answered the phone i didn't expect anybody to answer the phone why the hell did you call them well because i wanted to see if anyone would answer the phone you know small town reasoning <sighs> so the quick trip got closed down the dollar store got closed down the liquor store got closed down. That was really bad news because the liquor store is right beside where I work, which is a really good thing sometimes, but then again. And, uh, yeah, so news started trickling to us around 10, 1030 that this, it was in fact just a domestic disturbance and someone was threatening to kill themselves, but they were going to take out their significant other first. And it's like, oh, one of those you don't want to live anymore but by golly you just can't imagine your significant other going on without you so you're going to take them out first and then well <laughs> oh damn gun jammed now i'm still here oops well honey you're in a better place now you know those kind of people I hate when people do that shit. It's like, really? Seriously? You can't freaking go on your own? If you want to take yourself out, that is your business. But what's this bullshit of you seeming to think that you need to take your loved ones with you? Did you get group rates on the suicide train or something? Dumbasses. In any case, we had cops... We had hypos. We had, whoo, we had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. And we had looky-loos. And y'all that are from small towns, or even if you're not from a small town, looky-loos are the people that it doesn't make a shit and bit of difference what's going on. They all got scanners at home, and they try and get as close as possible. Well, I want to see what's going on. Don't make a shit that they're getting in the way. Don't make a shit that they could get hurt or get someone else hurt. Oh, see it's going on. Lucky lose. Had a boatload of them. Didn't even stop to think. I mean, yeah, they're they're all going. We heard there's someone, a crazed gunman. So we wanted to come drive out and see for ourselves. Oh, sure. Sure. Become a statistic, moron. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah, we have a few of those people out here. <laughs> like half the population. So, 
Yeah. <coughs> By noon, they had told everybody, okay, you don't have to do a lockdown anymore because we have the c situation contained, which basically means SWAT had showed up, and I'm not shitting you. SWAT. Frickin' big black SWAT van. <coughs> Excuse me. And then later, one of those tactical assault vehicles. I'd never seen one of them things in real life. That was kind of cool to see. Not really kind of cool to see two blocks away from me, but kind of cool to see. Um, thankfully, though, long story short, long boring day short, because, yeah, nobody, once the looky lures were done, and they stationed cops all over the place to kind of cut down on the looky loo shit, yeah, so did the uh, traffic coming through the dealership. Because, yeah, we were still open. Everybody else around us was closed. But we were open because you never know when someone might want to buy a getaway car. <laughs> or steal one. What the hell? So, um, yeah, it all got settled this evening. They opened up the road, or all the roads, about 4.30 this, e or this afternoon. So I no longer had to take the circuitous route to get home. Yay! Which was awesomeness because the freaking wind is blowing like a mother puss bucket out here right now. We're supposed to have thunder boomers rolling in just any time now. So, yeah, this morning we had some rocking and a rolling with the popo, and now Mother Nature is going to be doing some rocking and a rolling. So, wow, talk about a freaky Friday. Yee ha! It's going to be fun. But hey, you know what? Booneyville, population 2,100, maybe 2,200 on a good year. Um, within an hour's time, increased its population by 100 people. <laughs> they all had badges and guns and vests. And people were well, actually a neighbor across a lot because we have residential just right beside us. Uh, came over to see if we knew what the hell was going on. And he said, maybe I maybe I ought to be concerned when I walk back to my house. And I said, just be sure to have your hands up. Don't shoot. <laughs> yeah. We, we're not used to this shit, you know. Y'all big city people. Which, you know, I was really glad to get home because getting out of the city and all that damn high crime and all that shit, you know, 2,100 people, that's a lot of people, damn it. Dang, I thought I shut that off. Obviously, I did not. There, now I did. Ha! So, two people were arrested for domestic violence, so. Um, and uh, the female of the bunch was the one that uh, had started it all, holding her spouse hostage. So, yeah, it was a rather interesting day out here in Booneyville. Go figure. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh-oh, and it looks like the Thunder Boomers are hitting. Because my dear friend Lisa B. just shared a picture of out in Colorado, Kiowa County, Colorado, which is just west of me. Um... Had a dernator on the ground. So, hey, tis the season. All this fun shit's starting up again. Yippee-i-a. Let's see. I'm going to see if there's anything else going on. And, yes, I hope to God we go back to being boring. Oh, and Lisa B. shared it as well. Oh, crap. Fakey Book's not letting it be shared. Shame on you, Fakey Book. Ah, there we go. Yep. Now we got all kinds of people sharing it. Yee-haw. <laughs> see, this is big news out here. We don't see this shit very often. Okay. Um, bottom line cost of the incident, good Lord only knows. Because when they were there, let's see. The whole KDOT parking lot was pretty well full by the time I got to work at 8 o'clock this morning. And that was just, you know, popo vehicles. And then having two SWAT vehicles show up, or special incident groups. Um, Lord only knows. 
I'll bet you it's probably, oh God, you know, I don't want to say a hundred grand because I'm sure it's more than that just with the freaking vehicles that were in, I know it was more than that just with the vehicles involved. But on the plus side, I did talk to some people that had to do run some errands either to Colby, which is about 25 miles away, or to Hayes, which is about 90 miles away. And they said, yeah, they just got out on the highway, kicked the crews on 85 and went, fuck it. Because it's not like there was a highway patrol out on the highway. They were all in my town. <laughs> so, yeah, speeders got a free lunch today. <laughs> Better enjoy it. Because when they all started leaving, they were all, I'm sure they were all just itching. Which, as I was driving home, yeah, uh, on the highway, you know, and looking over towards the direction of where all of the hubbub was going on. It was like, holy crap, now I see why you guys closed the highway. Because, yeah, that was, yeah, maybe 150 feet. Well, no, I don't think it's even that far off the highway. Maybe 100 feet off the highway this is where all this shit went on. So it's like, oh, well, how interesting is this? So, um... My sister-in-law's asking. Just a sec. Uh, okay, so, in any case, all of the big hullabaloo, reverse psychology like Apple. Oh, thanks, Meister. Microsoft sues U.S. government over secret requests for customer data. Yeah, you know what? They're suing for that shit because they're going, we got to make ourselves look good. Because, yeah, it doesn't make any difference that we've been giving it to them already. But now we're going to sue because, well, you know, in case our customers decide to sue us. And have you noticed there's very, you know, people just aren't turning in and tuning in turning on and turning in and flipping out and all that fun shit over Windows 10. I keep getting the lovely little notifications and getting told that, you know, you need to do it now while it's still free. That's what it used to say. And now it's going, please upgrade to Windows 10. You know you want to, Grammy. And I'm saying, fuck you. I don't want nothing to do with your ass. Nah, not interested. Go away. You bother me. I, I don't want Windows 10. I would just as soon go back to, like, XP. I liked XP. Although I don't mind my Windows 7, but I liked XP. Um, I know, I'm kind of weird. Okay, let me see. What do I have? I'm going to get away from my, uh, the local news, because, yeah, local news, <laughs> The other big thing in the news today, all kinds of people are going, it's tax day. Have you gotten your taxes done? Tax, tax. Is that those kind of them sharp little things that people put on your chair so when you sit down, you have a pain in your ass because that's pretty much what they are? <sighs> yeah, tis the season to be bleeding is pretty much what it is. Yippee-i-yay, cow patty. Um, yeah, I know all kinds of people that are scrambling. And then they went, oh, because... Oh, okay. Cool. Yay. Okay, my brother David's going to be coming to Hayes. Yay. Yay. I'll have to go down and see him. Um, and I may have to send some things back with him. I don't know. I may have to have my daughter get with him. Because uh, she's got stuff she wants to send out to me. And I don't think I'm going to go down that direction this weekend. Because... The whole state's supposed to be getting plowed with weather. I don't like driving in that shit. I'm kind of a weenie when it comes to that. Slade. I remember Slade. Mr. Brendan B. is sharing all kinds of tunage. What? Ted Cruz says he won't ban dildos if he becomes president. <laughs> you know why he won't ban dildos? Because he is one. Ted Cruz is a dildo. No, he's not. That's that's an insult to dildos. He's a dillwad. You know that ick. Mm. 
Hmm. Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz. He's such a, yeah, he's just such a. Okay, um, I'm going to get to this real quick just because I saw it and it's like, holy shit balls. The hell did Japan ever do to deserve this? Mother Nature, did you get really pissy at them? I know, it doesn't make any difference. They're on the ring of fire and that's just the way it works. If they wouldn't have wanted to have all this shaking and rattling and rolling, they shouldn't have lived there. Uh-huh. This is on strangesounds.org. Apparently a series of, series of 10 strong earthquakes strike Japan in 24 hours. A 7.0 magnitude and a 6.2 magnitude quake. Damn. That's some serious shaking going on, let me tell you. Uh, the latest one was a 7.2 and it occurred... Um, Okay, this says Saturday morning, which it's their Saturday, our Friday, because you know that whole Dateline thing that totally messes with me? Um, apparently, it was at 1225 Eastern Daylight Time this morning, and it was at a depth of 6.2 miles. Wow, 7.0. That would be a roof rattler. Yes, it would. And apparently, it not only rattled roofs, it took down homes and all kinds of other structures. So, this one looks like, uh, okay. Okay, the one on Thursday, the, this says that there were n killed nine people and left more than 800 injured. And today's, which was a 7.0, is nearly 16 times stronger than a 6.2 in terms of energy release. Holy sheet wonder if that's the newscaster's name. Holy sheet. Um, a very high chance of fatalities, which, duh. Oh, damn. I mean, it tore shit out of things over there. And these are people that build for quakes. You know, as opposed to us over here. We don't. Um... Oh, okay. That's true. I, you know, I really need to do, I'm going to do Linux on my other computer. This computer, I'll, I'll just leave alone and let it, because it's not Windows 8. It's older. <laughs> and so I'll leave it alone. I'm fine with it. And I do my broadcasting and all that fun stuff. But my other computer, yeah, I think I'm going to do Linux on it. Because I'm just, I'm just not liking Windows 8. And I sure as hell don't want to try Windows 10. Um... Okay, I'm going to share this over here on uh, that effing site. I was going to log in to Inform Planet, but I have my password written in a little book because, well, I don't trust computer files. I don't trust a lot of shit on computers anymore. Well, actually, it's not the stuff on the computer that I don't trust. It's the others that I don't trust to be nice and stay the fuck out of it and leave it alone because it's not theirs to mess with kind of shit. Kind of learned that lesson. So, um, yeah, I don't keep a file of that stuff on uh, my computer. I, I have two little books <laughs> that I keep updated for that. Every time I change a password, I correct my books. Because, yeah. And the reason I have two is because if I only have one, I'll lose it and I'll be screwed. So I have two, <laughs> and they're both in really safe places where I'm sure I'll remember where in the hell they're at. Any of y'all do that shit? I do, all the time. It's like, crap. I put it in a really good place where I would remember, and then I forgot. Crap and only. Oh, well. Okay, now that I've done the shaking and rattling and rolling and, and all that fun stuff. Let's go check out uh where was that? I seen something. I seen it. I seen it with my own two. Oh yeah. Wow. I put a lot of stuff in my pocket today too. And I'm uh, yeah. But this is over on uh Oopy. 
Okay, someone shared earlier today shared a cannibal alligator feasting on smaller gators in Florida. Y'all, damn, you're strange. But that's not the Florida story I want to go to. I want to go to this one. Because this one actually looks like something that would be fun to do on a lake. Not an ocean. Oceans are really big. And they have really big critters in them. And I can't tread water that long. Just saying. But uh, apparently this uh, Florida man plans to use an ocean bubble to travel to the Caribbean. What happens if uh, you go into the Bermuda Triangle in your bubble? Will you go through a wormhole kind of bubble thing and pop out in your bubble thing on the other side? And will you know you're on the other side? Quantum physics time that I really don't care to go to. Apparently on uh, Pompano Beach, is that how you say that? A man from Florida has constructed a bubble-like vessel that he plans to use to travel along the Bermuda Triangle. See? See? What did I tell you? I'm psychotic like that. Reza Balucci. Reza Balucci has set out to travel from Pompano Beach to Bermuda, Haiti, Cuba, and Puerto Rico in his man-propelled bubble he calls the hydropod. Oh, man, I gotta look at this again. It does look kind of cool. I don't think I'd try that kind of a trip, but whew. The bubble has six, uh, 36 buoyancy balls on each side, and Balucci will be equipped with a life vest containing a water, a water filter, a GPS tracking device, and shark repellent. <laughs> Honey, are you a lawyer? That's sharp, shark repellent enough because there are some things even sharks won't eat. Bellucci attempted the trip once before in October of 2014, but his voyage was cut short when Coast Guard officials rescued him after his GPS fell into the ocean 70 miles off St. Augustine. How did your GPS fall into the ocean, hun? Did you not have it attached to you? It's like a life alert thing. You wear it around your neck. And then if you've fallen and can't get up, you push the button. Hopefully you'll have little bags of snacky treats, too, so you don't starve. Hmm. They burst my bubble, and now I put signs up that say, Please don't burst my bubble. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> oh, apparently Bellucci is an endurance athlete and has also attempted other feats, including surviving six weeks in Death Valley and running around the perimeter of the United States. Dude, seriously, that goes beyond endurance into a wacko. He also said he began jumping rope in a sauna and running 20 miles a day to prepare for the trip. Two things that I would have never thought of putting together. Hmm. Bellucci said that he'd, uh, he uses his stunts to raise money for children in need. Okay, well, that's cool. And plans to run through every country in the world to gather funds for that cause. I try to do the best thing from my heart. Give help to children, he said. Well, that's kind of cool. He began his journey by casting off from Pom- Pompano Beach on Wednesday afternoon and requested that Coast Guard officials leave him alone this time around. Don't be bursting my bubble. Cheapers. Just, I want to be left alone. That does look like a cool vessel, but I don't think I would take it. Yeah. Don't think I'd take that out on the ocean. On a lake, yeah. Ocean, ugh. I've flown over oceans. I've swam in, in the Pacific. Not very far, because it's freaking cold. Because I was at Pismo Beach, and on one side the pier it's really cold, and on the other side it's not. And I happened to be on the side that was. <laughs> location, location, location. Huh. I... Mm. 
Yes. Clinton's Benghazi phone records just released. This, sh okay, this should put her behind bars. And I know that she would look ever so attractive in one of those orange jumpsuits and have a long-term stay at the Gray Bar Hilton. That would be absolutely awesome. I would not mind footing the bill for that one. I would also actually tip the guard. But, unfortunately, people like that, you know, they say that crime doesn't pay. Well, it pays. It just depends on what you consider payment. And obviously, she's not getting the payment that she so richly deserves, or at least a lot of people seem to think she deserves. It will come. Trust me, she will get it. Oy. But until then, damn. Shrillery, shrillery. You know, your cankles aren't going to get you out of every problem, lady. If I can use that. Ah, uh, no, I don't want to use that term. Oh, hey. I'll use this little guy. He's cute. I'm sorry. I'm prattling. Okay. Anything? Hi, Tom. We're just hanging. Okay. Meister said that he'd bring a bubbler and a triple bubbler and bubble on down to Jamaica month. Ah, Jamaica mom, there you go. She's a huge clit biting. Ew. Wow. Ew. That just put a mental image. In, I, I, I haven't perfected my mental etch-a-sketch yet, Tom. That's just, that's cruel and unusual. And I'm going to have to add that to what our nightmares made of. That, right there. Oh. Damn. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have nightmares of, of a little chomp, 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 shrillery. Ah. Fui. <laughs> it hurts my brain. Owie. It hurts other places too, just. To, ah. Man, I just ate too. Not doing me much good. Hey, looky, there's John Kasich. To seniors who want to keep your social security. Guess what? Yeah, we had someone from the 401k in on Wednesday at work. Mm -hmm. He said, well, actually, when he was talking to me, because when he saw me write down my birth date, he went, oh, well, you'll probably still be able to draw some social security. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yes, I am. I am of that age. <laughs> I might get one check or not. No, because that's still quite a few years away. I don't think I'm going to get any of that money. I hope y'all have been partying on it. Whoever's been partying on it. Sons of bitches. Because I've been paying in on that. Actually, I'm not paying in. They've been taking it from me. They've been, you'll never notice it missing. Well, you're right. I never saw it. So how can I notice it missing if I never saw it? Yeah, I do see that reasoning right there. And I will never get it. Um, let's see. Okay, I got to answer her. Um... Oops. Let's see here. Do I have anybody? Hi, Darwin. How you doing, sweetheart? Hi, Gary. Thank you for sharing that, hon. Truly appreciate it. Um, let's see. Okay, let's see. What else do I have? Yes. I know the Clintons are not ordinary. The Clintons are rather odd. They're very unusual. 
usual and not in a fun way. No. I'm thinking Slick Willie probably likes to watch Shrillery is probably the way that works. And then, then he sits over there in the corner and he goes, <laughs> Can I have some when you're done? Yeah. That's probably the way that shit works. Ew. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go to my pocket because I do have a couple of things in here. One of these is something that my brother Choey sent to me. And I don't think brother Choey is going to be playing along because I think he's down visiting his new grandson. As well he should be. Although his new grandson is not a small child. He was half grown when he was born. Nine pounds, nine ounces, I think, is what he said. Big bada boom baby. Big baby. But this is one that he sent to me. It's from hotair.com. <laughs> and for those of you that know me, yeah. That's why I do the radio, because I'm so full of hot air. I've got to let some of it out at least twice a week. <laughs> California unions arrange to cut their own members out of a wage increase. You know it's for your own good. And besides, you know, us union bosses, we need the money. Because did you hear that guy over there? He's got gold-plated bathroom fixtures. And we don't. Yeah, sucks. So, we're cutting your wages so we can have the pretties that we know we deserve. Out in Mexifornia, I mean California, I mean California is more like it, there's been huge progress in the fight for 15, um, fight for 15 and raise the minimum wage. Oh, okay. In the fight for 15. That's how that goes. Obviously, it's not just grassroots activists and disaffected workers getting all of this done. Because they generally don't have the cash and the statewide organizational structure to get the bar ball rolling quickly. Which, okay. Sweetie, that $15 an hour, that ain't going to do shit for you. Seriously. Looking at it just from an absolutely practical financial standpoint. Number one. The small businesses are not going to be able to pay that. So there's probably going to be an exemption for them. If there is not an exemption for the small businesses, they will go out of business, hence fewer jobs in the job market. Now, when you start getting that $15 an hour, number one, they're going to start expecting you to produce just a wee bit more. Um, that's number one. A lot of your other benefits are probably going to go by the wayside, like, oh, no more sick leave, no more vacay, uh probably cutting out 401ks all that fun shit because they gotta make up that extra expense somewhere uh now you also get to figure in that you are earning a higher wage so guess what uncle sugar getting a percentage of your wage gets to have a bigger chunk because you know five percent of one dollar is not nearly as much as five percent of ten dollars just so as you know. So, uh, when you add up everything, oh, and, oh, wait, let's stop and think here. All of the things that you purchase now, if the minimum wage goes up to $15 an hour. Oh, someone from, ah, oh, cool. How fun is that? One of them Amazon tablets. I wonder if that's either Kate or, huh, could that be Miss Kate? Huh, I wonder who could, who that could be. Let me take a peek here. Uh, it's either Kate or Lisa B, one of the two. Ha, ha, ha. How cool. A local yokel. Or it might be Margaret, too, because I told Margaret that I'm on the radio on Wednesdays and Fridays. And Margaret is the county attorney out here. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. <laughs> I bowl with her. She's a loon. She's not quite as crazy as me, but she's getting there. Uh, 
Okay, maybe she's not quite getting there, but give her a few years. She'll get there. Okay, where was I at? I'm lost. Oh, I know, California. Yeah, and the wage thing. Okay, so when you figure your taxes, what tax is coming out of your paycheck, which that also means the cut that Social Security takes out of your check will grow as well because it's a percentage. So what comes out of your check before you even see it is going to increase. What you pay for everything else because, well, they have to recoup that expense somehow. Therefore, the product price is going to go up. So what you pay for all of the goods that you purchase is going to be more. And, well, you know, all the landlords are going to say, oh, well, you know, your lease is up for renewal. And I see you got a raise. So I'm raising the rent. You know what? By the time it's all said and done, you're actually going to be in worse shape. So seriously, instead of pushing for $15 an hour or raising the minimum wage and making it legal, mandatory, whatever the hell, instead of doing that, how about you work on some of that corruption shit that's going on? Huh? Yeah, apparently these lovely little unions... They're big players in this game, and they've teamed up with legislators and business owners to make the wage increase happen. What? Business owners and union working together? Hmm. Well, first, you need to tackle the mystery of why some people who are actually complaining the most are union workers themselves. There are raises given out, to be sure, but some of these folks aren't getting a slice of the pie. According to Bill Martinez, a 53-year-old bellhop, he's hauled tourist luggage across the Flagstone Plaza at the Sheridan Universal in Studio City for two decades. He said he was excited after the council's vote to raise the minimum hourly wage at large hotels to $15.37 which he expected to boost his paycheck by 71%. He soon found out he wouldn't be getting a raise after all. Under an obscure provision of the city's wage hike, unionized hotels were granted an exemption allowing them to pay their employees less. The result is that Martinez, who pays $56.50 every month, for membership in the Hotel Workers Union Unite Here now makes less than those doing the same job in non-union workplaces. The union's got your back. Yes, it does. And the only reason they've got your back is they're measuring it for that knife and the bullseye that they're putting on it so that they can be more accurate when they throw that knife. That's what really makes me mad, Martinez says. I just wanted to be treated equal. Don't exempt us because we're the ones paying the union dues. <laughs> oh, honey, are you finally starting to see how things really work? Sucks, don't it? Sucks to be you. So why isn't Bill getting some of that sweet 1537 per hour action? Well... He's a member of the union who worked to have the higher wage mandated. But that bill didn't, uh, what Bill didn't know was that there was a loophole in the rules which said that hotels with union labor don't have to pay the higher wage unless they felt like it. And guess what? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Go figure. As the Time article admits, this is a rather counterintuitive. The raison d'etre of unions is supposedly to arrange better conditions, compensation, and benefits for their members. So why would they agree to that deal? It doesn't jump out at you. But the reality is that all of the hotels or not all of the hotels, are unionized. The ones who run open shops fall under the new arrangement and have to pay their workers significantly higher wages. 
So how do they get out of this sudden spike in labor costs, which could put them at a disadvantage with their competitors? Do, 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 They unionize. <laughs> I bet you didn't see that one coming, did ya? I know I didn't. Ha, <laughs> ha, yeah, right. Ha, <sighs> go figure. Yeah, it's a really genius maneuver if you think about it. Getting a raise for some of the workers in the city who already belong to your union doesn't really translate into that much more money in dues because they only collect a small percentage of that increase. But if you can suddenly enlist the workers at a whole raft of new businesses into your organization, you get a piece of all their paychecks. It's a perfect plan. <laughs> Quite diabolical, don't you think? Of course, the people who get left out in the cold are the actual members of the union, and, well, they show you just exactly how much they care for you. Particularly once they find out what's going on. Huh. Huh. Pat? That was never the real objective of the Union in modern times anyway, was it? What's critical is enlisting as much of the workforce as possible and keeping the cash flowing in so they can continue to fund the political campaigns of Democrats. Which I'm not going to say necessarily Democrats because it's not just them that are the ass munches of the world. Huh... <sighs> Do, 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 ha, 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 um, yep, fix the money, not the wages, yep. I have no idea, you know, maybe that odd wage, I, uh, mm, I don't know why it's such an odd wage, but it really is an odd wage. Although, it's more than what I make. So, <laughs> go figure. Of course, I live in Booneyville. I don't have the expenses that they do out in California. So, hey, they go. Uh-oh, Tom fell out. Bye, Tom. Damn it all. And actually, the best way, hun, to fix the wages or fix the money <laughs> Get the fix out of the money. Start bartering. Do that a lot out here in Booneyville. It's usually the best way to go. That way, everybody's happy. Oh. And you know, those people that are in the unions, I just, I really feel... Some of them I feel bad for, and some of them it's like, really, dude? And weren't you the one that kept going, you should be union. The union does so much for us. Ha! <laughs> See how much it does for you. Do you feel special? Thank you, sir. Can I have another? You ought to feel special. Oh... <sighs> Just a sec. I got to put this over on Twitter. Okay. What? 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 Watch this. Minimum wage workers shut down these minimum wage protesters. What? That's over here on Twitter. I may have to watch that later. Wayne Dupree shared that. Okay, um, yes. Um, hi, Molly. Hi, Michael. Oh, how fun. 
<laughs> okay, there's Calvin and Hobbes. And Calvin is sitting here bitching. This bad grade is lowering my self-esteem. To which his teacher replies, then you should work harder so you don't get bad grades. And in the final little cell, Calvin says, your denial of my victimhood is lowering my self-esteem. Yeah. <laughs> well, I feel bad for you, Calvin. I love you, darling. I truly do. But damn, honey, deal with it. Okay. Got to refresh this. Check on this. Go back to my oopie. Oopie. Do you know that there's a ballet dancing gorilla? And there was also an octopus battle going on that a snorkeler captured on camera. Hey, just too cool. I didn't know that they did that stuff. But, let's see. Is Moosey listening in? <laughs> I gotta go here. There's one from Wisconsin, but yeah. Okay, I got to do this one. All you Canucks, guess what? You don't get left out of the mix. Hardy har har har. Apparently a Canadian library writes letter to patrons with foul body odor. Hmm. You know, in closed spaces, musty old books aren't bad enough. You got to add B.O. to it as well. Whoo, I'll bet that's not fun. A Canadian library looked to handle complaints about patrons' foul body odor by drafting a letter that directed them to local public showers and laundry facilities. Um, if people need to use local public showers and laundry facilities, how do they have an address to send the letter to? Hmm? New Market Public Library wrote the letter, to gently inform patrons of complaints about a noticeable odor. You're ever so odiferous, and we're not saying that in a pleasant way. We respectfully request that you take steps to control this odor before your future visits to the library. If you need access to free public showers or laundry facilities, you can access these at the Trinity United Church across the street from the library during weekdays. And I'm sure the Trinity United Church is just ever so thank you, thankful for you sending them more business. The letter apparently got a negative response from some observers, including homeless advocate Tom Pearson. Tom, sweetheart, if you're truly a homeless advocate, let's do something about this whole homeless thing. Like, you know, let's, let's start putting them up in, you know, these homes that have been foreclosed on. Because they're just sitting there falling apart anyway. They may as well be a roof over someone's head, don't you think? Tom apparently told the newspaper, The Star, that he believes the note discriminates against the homeless and other groups. No, it... Um, notifies the exceptionally stinky that they need to deal with their stinkiness is what it does i know lots of people that are not homeless and yet really need to shake the hand of the deodorant can <laughs> if you get my drift if you ask me it's discriminatory he said it's as degrading an experience as I can only imagine one having to go through in a spot they've used to socialize and get warm in many years. A person in a wheelchair may only get access to a shower twice a week. Would they be cited too? Hmm, I'm wondering. The library CEO, Todd Kyle, defended the library's right to temporarily ask, temporary, excuse me, hiccup, ask the guests to leave, and said he believed the letter offered a more dignified way to inform patrons of the issue. Well, yeah, you know, you give them, a, you slip them a little note, you know, it's like passing notes in class. You pass them a little note, and if they get a little butt hurt or something, you go, seriously, dude, I'll walk you across the street. Here, bar soap, have at it. 
This gives us the opportunity to not have to embarrass them, as well as preserve the dignity and get our message across without having to put our staff at risk. This is an attempt to get that message across in the most dignified way possible. That's a number of different instances where we might need to comment on a person's odor. Well, you know, usually if I have to comment on someone's odor, excuse me, I usually go, dude, seriously, what the hell did you have to eat for supper last night? Whew, you are mighty potent. You know, you could peel paint. Don't get close to that new car. He also noted that the letter states patrons who receive the notifications are not prohibited from returning to the library and told the CBC that the complaints about odor can also extend to people who wear strong perfume, which let me tell you, there are some people that holy crap, all they have to do is open the door to the business and if we've got just a gentle breeze, you can smell them from 30 feet away and trust me if you can smell someone's perfume from that far away they took a shower in it and you need to clue them in that hun less is more little dab behind each ear call it good don't just do a little you know like you're trying to bless the evil spirits and get them out of the building kind of shit hey People have also suggested that it might not be the most dignified way to get the message across. I haven't heard that from the specif specific people involved, he said, which, you know, there's an awful lot of people out there that would go, oh, wow, you know, because seriously, some people, you know, especially people that do not have adequate facilities, you get to the point where your nasal passages no longer recognize the aroma. You know, it's like people that live close to a feed yard or something, unless you go, dude, seriously. Or people that work at a feed yard. You just look at them and go, damn. How do you get used to that smell? And you just do. Your, your nasal passages just get to the point where you just kind of go, ah, every day. But if the, if the scent changes, they will notice that. And the same is with this. You know, some people, and some people would appreciate someone just going up and going, dude, seriously, here, come on. I know if I was in that situation and someone were to come up, although most of the time I'm going, is that me? Shit. <laughs> if that's me, I'm going to go give myself sponge bath real quick. <laughs> Woo! But... Yeah, I really don't see that there is a, a real problem with this, especially if it's done discreetly. You know, if you're not going up to someone and, and doing the great big old eh, 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 and arrows point, lighted arrows pointing at them and all this other fun shit and going, smell her letter, smell her letter. You know, if you aren't doing that shit, if you're just kind of going up to them and going, uh, excuse me, hun, sorry, but please. Do you need some assistance? And just leave it at that. Let them try and keep some dignity. You try not to be condescending. It works out quite well. And if you're trying to be helpful as well, that's, you know. But the people that really swim. Uh-oh. Vinny's going for a toker. Um... What? Oh, Kate's going to get wet. I see that. Um, you know, sometimes people that do swim in their perfume really need to have that letter and someone going, honey. Of course, cheap perfume is not a good thing either, but oh well. I really don't see that this is a bad thing. I mean, initially I thought, ooh, wow, funny, but eh, not so bad. So I'm just going to go ahead and share this. No little emoticons or none of that fun stuff. 
Yes, over there on Fakey Book. Hi, Michael. Hi, Brandon. What'd you share, honey? Hi, Alan. Oh. Cool. And Molly. Hi, Molly. I don't know if they hear me or not, but I'm saying hey to them. What did you share, Lisa B? I'm to see. <gasps> Ooh. Hey. What a cool idea. Lisa B just shared this picture. You know the little inflatable kitty pools? Just blow them up and then put your bedding in there and camp out underneath the stars. How way cool is that? Although it wouldn't work with my puppies because they would probably pop the little kitty pool. But hey, that's a cool idea. <laughs> and then when you're done, you just let the air out and go back inside. <laughs> cool. I may have to try that. I like that idea, Lisa B. Um, yoinks. Okay, anything else going on over here? Nope. I am going to go over and seeing as how I'm already past my first hour. Oh, I don't want to know that. Um, I'm going to go to the pig because Hambo and Porcus always have something interesting for the... Uh, this date in history. Oh, and Hambo just shared this lovely little image. How to make a, a man happy. Although it probably could have been Porcus too. I don't know. So, how do you make a man happy? Number one, show up naked. Number two, bring food. Is that really how it works? Are you guys really that easy? <laughs> Because I don't know that that would work for me. <laughs> okay, over on the pig. Word of the day is, <laughs> go figure, taxpayer. It's a noun. Number one, the lowest link in the political food chain. His, her, his, her, or its only function is to fund the largesse the nanny state bestows on chronic malcontents and politically prized parasites. Number two, that hard-working slob whose only perk is having the elector tormentor rat bastards who are infringing his liberty, stealing his rightful reward, and squander it on a bunch of parasites, and which is namely themselves. And number three, a depressingly accessible, self-refilling piggy bank which elected tormentors smash open regularly whenever they've pissed away all the money they stole during the last piggy bank plunder. Yeah, talk about parasites. And in the quotable quotes section, he has, we seem to be moving steadily in the direction of a society where no one is responsible for what he himself did. But we are all responsible for what someone else did, either in the present or in the past. That was Thomas Sowell. I do kind of like Thomas Sowell. I really do. So in the Tasty Tidbits, this is Hambo's tax season tirade, by the way, which I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, and it was spawned by Shrillery's gigantic tax hike brain fart. No man can have a right to impose an unchosen obligation, an unrewarded duty, or involuntary servitude on another man. There can be no such thing as the right to enslave. A right does not include the material implementation of that right by other men. It includes only the freedom to earn that implementation by one's own effort. That's from the essay Man's Rights by Ayn Rand. If you watch any Capitol Hill clown posse debate about pending tax legislation, 
you're destined to hear one of the Democrat elected tour manners say it. They'll launch a lengthy, high-volume, self-righteous tirade about tax cuts for the rich and spout bullcrap that the rich don't pay their fair share. Whenever I hear that crap, it's instantly obvious that the bloviating elected tormentor, like all the class warfare punks in Congress, thinks everyone's rightful property, including yours and mine, really belongs to the nanny state. In their alleged minds, the elephant clan steals the government's money and gives it to undeserving fat cats. That twisted attitude stands Re, or stands reality on its head because when you steal a guy's wallet then hand him back two dollars for bus fare you're not giving him any damn thing you're returning a small portion of the wealth that you stole from him some rational adult needs to grab these greedy public trough swilling piss ants by the scruff of the neck and lay some unvarnished facts on them. Since there aren't any rational adults available, I'll administer this reality check. Oh, <laughs> here we go. All right, Hambo, what you got? Bring it. Contrary to popular parasite coddling myth, money earned by sovereign American individuals is not government property. It's not the government's damn money. It belongs first and foremost to those individuals who earned it. The government likes to gloss over this fact by calling an individual's hard-earned money a resource or revenue. You need to get real about tax refund checks. When you get money back, you didn't put one over on Uncle Sam's tax Nazis. That refund means they stole too much money from you the prior year. That means that they stole it, used it, then returned it without paying one damn penny of interest. The only thing that stands between Uncle Sam and an armed revolt by outraged taxpayers is the withholding scam. They take it a little at a time. And they get their cut out of your hard-earned money first. They've got you so distracted that you don't even count that part of your check as your money. If every American taxpayer had to write a check on April 15th for the full amount that Uncle Sam is stealing from you, those tax revolt barricades would be manned in a New York minute. A tax cut, by definition goes to those who pay taxes. Since the top 10% of wage earners pay the lion's share of taxes that are collected, the data on this contention has been widely distributed and remains unrefuted. They will, quite rightly, get a bigger tax cut than those who pay little or nothing. Giving a tax cut to those who don't pay taxes is not a tax cut. It's a wealth transfer scheme. We need to call this by its proper name. Welfare. The earned in income tax credit is a prime example. Let's say a family of four earning $29,000 pays $1,500 in withholding. When they file their taxes, they, they will get a $3,200 refund thanks to this earned income scam. In other words, this welfare payment scheme gives them all of their withholding back plus an additional 1700 donation from kindly Uncle Sam. When you cut through all the bovine excrement, the EITC works this way. If you earn less than 33000 a year and have kids, the IRS will give you back two or three times what they withheld for taxes. Ka-ching! When you get back more than you paid, double or triple what you paid, it's not a tax refund. It's a welfare check that was laundered by the IRS. 
America's tax system punishes, criminalizes, achievement, and rewards failure. If you're a born parasite, a loser who can't get out of his own damn way, kindly Uncle Stam will steal somebody else's hard-earned money and give it to you. All you need to do is whine for it. If you're an achiever, Uncle Sam will tax you into the poorhouse. If, by some miracle, you leave a sizable estate, Uncle Sam will snatch it away from your rightful heirs, sell it, and give the proceeds to the parasites who are feeding off the rotting corpse of the American dream. Which is a nightmare, by the way. Stealing money from the one who earned it and giving it to someone who didn't isn't class well warfare. It's an old-fashioned mugging with Uncle Sam's tax Nazis doing the dirty work. Achievers who transform ideas and hard work into big bucks aren't the parasites. The real parasites are the political punks who spend decades swilling at the public trough. The real parasites are congressional class warfare cre or yeah, warfare cretins who stole the rightful property of America's achievers and use it for their own benefit by distributing it to their friends, supporters, and the chronically greedy losers who keep re-electing them to Congress. My hard-earned income is not a government resource. My hard-earned money belongs first, last, and always to me. You're not doing me any favors when you announce that the next time you mug me, you're going to steal a little less of my money. Class warfare and the transfer of wealth scheme these congressional class warriors perpetuate is straight out of the Marxist playbook. From each according to his ability to each according to his need. That might thrill the Capitol Hill class warrior clown spitless, but it has this pagan scribbler seriously contemplating a second American revolution. Enough is enough. Amen, Hambo. Now, for this date in history, April 15th, 1878, Harley Proctor introduces ivory soap and spends the rest of his career cleaning up. This date in history, 1927, Babe Ruth takes a step toward baseball history and the record books with his first four-bagger of the stellar 60 home run season. This date in history, April 15th, 1957. Unwilling to say bite me, a gutless Congress pours 41 million down post office rat hole to restore Saturday deliveries. And did you notice postage went down? Two cents. Ha <laughs> That's funny. Finally, this date in history, April 15th, 1988. Humor challenged Jihad Akazi's paint a fatwa bullseye on E.T. when those space monkeys aim some exploding meteor chin music at Indonesia. Some exploding meteor chin music. Hmm. I don't quite get that one, Hambo, but it's all good. It's okay. If y'all want to read more, just go to piggazette.com. That's P-I-Gazette.com. They have lots and lots of Hambo's got an epic rant going on here, which I'm sure he and Porcus wrote together. They also have other pages, such as the Prattler and Hambo's Hammer and Porcus's Pitchfork and lots and lots of other zero tolerance, oh crap, dumpster diving, pinups, toe tags, which is basically notables that have passed beyond the earthly plane. All kinds of really cool stuff. And Friends of Pig, they have Alice's Restaurant. Hey, there you go. So, go check out the pig if you want to check out something that's politically incorrect. Um, let's see here. Ah, Tom is back. Welcome back, Tom. What's that, Juana? 
How to identify plunder. See if the law takes from persons what belongs to them and gives it to other persons to whom it does not belong. See if the law benefits one citizen at the expense of, of another by doing what the citizen himself cannot do without committing a crime. Yeah, Baptiste did have that one pegged, didn't he? True that, Juana. True that. Okay. I need a sip. Okay, let's see. Where else do I wish? To? I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have a couple other things I need to get to. Um, I saw this one on MSN, no less. And, and I just thought, oh. The headline is what grabbed me. I have no idea what the hell it's about, but the headline grabbed me. You know, the U.S. could have shot down Russian jet that buzzed destroyer. That was John Kerry that said that. I'm thinking they were playing a life-size version of You Sank My Battleship. And I think the Russians were flying by going, Make my day. Do you feel lucky? Punk. <laughs> a Russian military jet that flew just feet from a U.S. destroyer in international waters in the Baltic Sea could have been shot down by U.S. rules of engagement, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said. Could, maybe, might, possibly, almost, kind of, sort of, only if you wanted to have an international incident with a country that's a little bit better at hitting what it aims at. Or at least hitting at what it says it's going to aim at. The Russian aircraft repeatedly buzzed the USS Donald Cook this week including an incident on Tuesday when a Russian Su-24 jet flew 30 feet, which is 9 meters, above the ship in a simulated attack profile. I think that was to let them know, yo, you're getting an, a little close to our stomping grounds. You know, there may not be a line in the sand out here in the water, but there is a line. Don't cross it. Of course, Russia has denied the action um, was reckless or provocative, although I'm still thinking the pilot was going, dude, seriously? You won't come any closer? Want to see my little friends that are back closer to home? Kerry, speaking to, uh, Thursday, strongly disagreed with Russia's denial. We condemn this kind of behavior. Sure you do. Sure you do. When someone else does it back at you, you condemn it. It is reckless. It is provocative. It is dangerous. And you just wet your pants, didn't you, Carrie? And under the rules of engagement, that could have been shot a shoot down. Rules of engagement since when? Since when? Do you ass monkeys follow any rules of engagement that anyone besides you agreed with answer me that batman carrie also added people need to understand that this is serious business in the united states and is not going to be intimidated on the high seas woo, 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 woo. mr bluff and bluster mr run the other way mr oh yeah you such a badass you know, the only way you scare people is when you get up close and personal and go, hi there. Because trust me, if you got really close to my field of vision and like snuck up behind me and said, hi there, and I turned and saw your face, there would be two movements, bowel and feet, probably at the same time. And I'm not saying yours, I'm saying mine, because I would shit and run. Just see that one of the few times I would actually run, but I would be jet propelled or maybe fecal matter propelled. However, it would be a solid fuel propel propulsion system. That's what it would be. I think Grammy ref uh, referred to that earlier today. <laughs> He goes on to say, we are communicating to the Russians how dangerous this is, and our hope is that 
This will never be repeated. Well, I had someone tell me one time that hope is just, uh, how'd they put that? Um, doubtful optimism. That's what hope is. Doubtful optimism. <laughs> That's a weird way of looking at it, but you know, you can look at it like that. The Russian maneuvers began Monday while the destroyer was located about 70 nautical miles from the Russian base in Kilingrad. It's a Russian enclave on the Baltic Sea. Okay, you know, I'm thinking that was pretty much standing on, you know, that was like when we were kids and standing on the, the end of the block. And yelling at someone halfway down the block, yo, your mama wears army boots. You know, that that's it that's the international equivalent of what y'all just did with your uh having your maneuvers so close. Cause that really is pretty close, hon. Just a hop, skip, and a jump. Don't you have missiles that'll go pretty close to that? How far can a ballistic missile travel? Inquiring minds want to know. I know absolutely nothing about that shit. Oh, not the same kind of fuel, Grim? Well, oops. (laughs) Oopsie. Well, it's not necessarily something that I want to use to propel myself either, but there you go. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, Tom says government is plunder since it is a crime for me to take someone's money and give it away. But by law, some is agents can come and take anyone's money and give it to someone else. Excuse me. Yeah, IRS. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called the IRS. In other words, T-H-I-R-S. Theirs. Mm Mm-hmm. It's theirs. You just don't realize it. You silly slave. Uh, Did I share this? I don't think I did. Nope, I didn't. You know, (coughs) I actually think that Schittlery, I mean, Schrillery, Hitlery, was a better Secretary of State. I mean, you know, (coughs) excuse me, at at least people, when she started talking mean and shit, people went, fuck, she means it. Do you know how evil she is? Whereas with Carrie, they're like, dude, you're ugly and you married a rich broad. And that's the only reason you are where you are is because you married a rich broad. Duh. I mean, John Kerry is just wanker, wanker, wanker. Can you say wanker? I think you can. He is just a total douche. And I mean like a massingale kind of douche. You know those nasty ones that don't do anything good for you? Yeah. Hi, Fraser Flav. What you got to say, sweetheart? Two legs bad, four legs good. Oh, yeah, that is true. That is true. Yes. Okay, and I see Grimmy mentioned me. Let me see what's going on here. Dang! I only, I have a little less than a half an hour to go. Oh, see, Fraser Flav said exactly what I said. Good job. Okay, I'm going to go back to my pocket because I do have a couple other things. This is one that, you know, um, I always thought that science was supposed to be one of those things. You went by the evidence and you cussed and discussed and you hashed and you rehashed 
And if if the evidence that you had did not meet your theory, then you came up with another theory. But it was always done with some kind of reason and reasoning. But apparently, Mr. Bill Nye, the science guy, is open to jail time for climate change skeptics. Well, sweetheart, number one, just because something, someone is skeptical of your bloviating bullshit doesn't mean that they deserve jail time because there's such thing as that's that's one of those lovely little parts of freedom of speech because not only are you free to speak whatever you wish to speak you're also free to not listen to someone else's whatever they're speaking that's kind of the flip side of the freedom of speech thing so if he doesn't want to listen to your bullshit or someone doesn't want to listen to your bullshit then it's on them their choice you know so oh i truly appreciate it grim although uh one of these days i'm gonna have to go out and purchase me a dildo just so when i read a dildo story i can say and i know what one of these is because i happen to have one <laughs> But then again, you know, because I've gone to those, I, I know I've told you, I've gone to those kind of parties. And I actually seriously thought about till I saw the price tag and I went, wow, really? And then I got to thinking, holy crap, what if I were to fall and can't get up and my kids have to come in and, you know, like clean out my house? And whether, even if it was still in the package, just having my kids find that in like my underwear drawer or something... I know how I would freak if I were to run across something like that in my mom's underwear drawer. So, nah, that's another reason why I probably will never buy one of those implements. Because it's like, <laughs> just the thought of the look on my kid's face, which would be hilarious. And yet, I, th I think just me being their mom has probably traumatized them enough. I don't know that I really need to push it. Do you? <laughs> I did go forth and procreate and reproduce. And and yeah, they did too. <laughs> okay, Bill Nye, science guy. I will agree that there is such a thing as climate change. Because you know what? That's what climate does. It changes. Go figure. It's called nature. I know, and that just... Are you not a natural science kind of guy? Bill guy? Bill Nye, the science guy? Oh, honey. Oh, Grimner. Oh, no, 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 no. Although, I do have to... <sighs> wow. Uh, yes. Uh, Tom, the IRS is the coll collection agency. They're the Guidos of the Federal Reserve. Um, I break a your leg. You pay a the money, I break a your leg. Okay. Um, and move to bed. <laughs> I would think that would be extremely awful awkward uh grim you know your your whole thing about any picture of ted cruz will work as a dildo replacement or trump or bernie or hillary honey last i knew you know i i had someone explain this to me uh dildos are supposed to bring you sexual gratification when you do not have a significant other or they're supposed to um add to and I'm thinking Ted Cruz, Trump, Bernie, Hillary. No, those are mood killers. Mood killers. No, 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 no. <sighs> That's just really, ew. No, Grimmy. Although they would be an embarrassment, you know, especially if, if I had like a sign that said, I love Hillary or Trump or Bernie or Cruz or any of that shit. If my kids were to come by cleaning out my place and see a sign like that, 
it would probably traumatize them for life. I think they would prefer seeing a dildo. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, I'm going to get back to Bill Nye, the science guy, who obviously is not into natural science. Yeah, he's called the science guy after the kids show that he hosted on PBS back in the 1990s. But obviously, he's lost some of his mental faculties since then. Um, and he is up for jailing people who question climate change. Hmm. I thought that's what science was all about, was asking those difficult questions. When asked about environmental activist Robert Kennedy's assertion that climate skeptics should be tried as war criminals, the TV personality mused, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. You couldn't, you know, be more a ambiguous. You couldn't just say, <laughs> wow, really? War criminals. Are you shitting me? You're going to equate someone saying, shit. I don't believe your climate bullshit because you fudged the numbers. You're going to equate that person with someone who went out and droned a school. Yeah, those are two those two are really I could see where you could come up with that. In a discussion of the case being brought by various states attorney generals against ExxonMobil an action that has led to subpoenas of free market think tanks such as Competitive Enterprise Institute, or CEI, Nye had this to say. As a taxpayer and voter, big whoop, the introduction of this extreme doubt about climate change is affecting my quality of life as a public citizen. <laughs> Fuck me, Ronan. Oh, wow. 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 Y'all just, wow. So, I can see where people are very concerned about this, and they're pursuing criminal investigations as well as engaging in discussions like this. That there is a chilling effect on scientists who are in extreme doubt about climate change. I think that is good. Okay, that there is a chilling effect on... Okay, you think it's good that scientists who doubt the bullshit... You think it's a good thing that those scientists are are being, you don't say scared or intimidated, but a chilling uh, effect. You know, that's a science guy way of saying scared or intimidated. I don't have a problem with bringing charges against ExxonMobil because I'm sure they've done all kinds of lovely little things that have not helped the planet at all at all. I'm sure Mother Nature is just really not happy with them at all, and Mother Nature's probably telling us, you ain't doing nothing? Y'all brought this shit? Do something. Clean up your own mess. But I don't see how ExxonMobil, who is an oil corporation who has been milking and making money for years and years and years, and yes, I know all of the arguments about it, because I've had all of the arguments about it. I've actually made some of the arguments about it, just if, you know, some of it was just to be devil's advocate, because quite frankly, I would much rather see an oil company make profits off of oil than the government make money by just taxing the shit out of it. I don't like taxes, though, so there you go. But <clears throat> to, to, to equate someone saying, I think your hypothesis and I think your conclusion is extremely faulty because the numbers that you used, the evidence that you cut out because it didn't fit with your preconceived notions, I disagree with what you came up with, with your assumptions and your conclusions. That person is just as bad as ExxonMobil and their oil spill. I got, yeah, I could see where that would be. Not. 
Oh, you don't need to be a flat earther to think this sort of attitude is necessarily all to the good. <laughs> Science works best when consensuses are reached via evidence and broad agreement, not political and legal threats. True. Science usually does work best when everybody can examine the evidence and everybody goes, I could see where you came up with that. Not, dude, seriously, where's the rest of the evidence? Because this is just, no, this just don't cut it. Reasons science correspondent Ronald Bailey notes that CEI subpoena which seeks 10 years worth of internal correspondence and private donor information, proceeded directly from the conference hosted by Al Gore and featuring many state-level attorney generals. Their main target is ExxonMobil, okay, which they claim has lied about environmental science. Okay, uh, that doesn't surprise me. But as Bailey, who doesn't actually agree with CEI on many climate change issues and policies notes, to outlaw disagreements over how to interpret science heads down a perilous path towards uh, license, what, uh, whatever, yeah, towards that, in which only a officially approved science is allowed to be practiced and discussed. I'm thinking the inquisitions come to mind. Just saying. And Glenn Reynolds, the, Tennis the University of Tennessee law professor who runs the popular Instapundent site, uh, wrote in USA Today, the subpoena of CEI is meant to punish the nonprofit for having taken money from ExxonMobil and will almost certainly chill its ability to raise money from donors, all because it doesn't subscribe to what politicians say is the proper way to think about the an act on climate change, which climate changes. That's what it does. Prescribing such orthodoxy seems to be just what they have in mind. Their approach is and I use the term quite deliberately, thoroughly un-American. In pursuing their action, they are betraying their oaths of office, abusing their powers, and behaving unethically as attorneys. Free speech advocates are already talking about a Virgin Islands tourism boycott. The voters everywhere need to ask themselves, if these government officials have such contempt for others' constitutional rights... Who might they target next for unacceptable speech? Yes, when they came for the poets, I said nothing because I was not a poet. You know where that heads, don't you? Oh, what is this? Bill Nye the Science Guy. He is an ass. Okay, I clicked on the wrong thing. That's what I wanted to click on. Ew, yeah, he is a little Hitler. You know, the funny thing is, I never paid attention to his show. I like Neil deGrasse. But Neil deGrasse also gets on my nerves. Um, I like, uh, what's his, uh, Ikido, Ichimoto, whatever, that guy. <laughs> the the gray-haired, yeah, I like him. Um... Remnant 420. Yeah, someone is catching on. Good. Oh, who is catching on? What are you talking about, sweetheart? Let me see this. It puts the taxes in the basket. Ah, ah, that's how that works. Okay. That, I hadn't thought of that. Thank you very much. That's a good one. Okay, let me see. Yes, I saw that Grammy about the, I don't, I, no, I don't want to go there. Not tonight. I'm, I'm already doing a gritchy 
ranty. Don't know that I want to go there. Okay, share this. I need to find me just the right emoticon. I, you know, I keep coming back to this little guy that's just smacking his head. But, you know, I also see the little guy that's in jail because, you know, you disagree with those that perform well under a desk or those that are in the pocket of those that perform well under a desk. <laughs> you go to jail. You do not pass go. You do not collect $200. You get no more scholarships. You get no more... The, you know, get um, federal funds, no more grants, no more this, no more that. Where the hell do you think those grants come from? That's what I want to know. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Remnant. Fraser, are you showing off that you know how to speak Japanese? Because uh, Namu Mayoho... Ringekyo? I have no idea what the hell that is. <laughs> Did I cuss? Was it good? Oh. Both gatekeep. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Quote. The term terrorism means the use of violence and threats to intimidate or coerce, especially for political purposes. This is also the definition of all government. Yeah! Ding, 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 ding. Give Cowboy Tech the booby prize. Well, Cowboy, you're going to have to talk to your honey about that. I'm sure you can talk her into it. <laughs> you're such a smooth talker anyway, sweetheart. Okay, I am going to go back. Wow. All these lovely, very learned, self-important people. You just want to drop kick some of them. And some of them you just kind of go, okay, whatever. Really? Seriously? You're breaking my heart. You torn it apart. So fuck you. Um, okay, I got to. I have time. I think. I don't think I did this one the other day. And I scrolled down on my pockets. It's like, I know I've got something else in there I wanted to get to. This is the subtle art of not giving a fuck. I think I can end with this, don't you? I think this is an appropriate one to end with. TheMindsJournal.com brought us this. In my life, I have given a fuck about many people and many things. I have also not given a fuck about many people and many things. And those fucks I have not given have made all the difference. Because now I still have fucks to give. <laughs> People often say the key to confidence and success in life is to simply not give a fuck. Indeed, we often refer to the strongest, most admirable people we know in terms of their lack of fucks given. Like, oh... Look at Susie working weekends again. She doesn't give a fuck. Or did you hear that Tom called the company president an asshole and still got a raise anyway? Holy shit, that dude does not give a fuck. Or Jason got up and ended his date with Cindy after 20 minutes. He said he wasn't going to listen to her bullshit anymore. Man. That guy does not give a fuck. So, chances are, you know somebody in your life who at one time or another did not give a fuck and went on to accomplish amazing feats. Perhaps there was a time in your life where you simply did not give a fuck and excelled to some extraordinary heights. I know for myself... Quitting my day job in finance after only six weeks and telling my boss that I was going to start selling dating on advice online ranks pretty high up there in my didn't give a fuck hall of fame. Same with deciding to sell most of my possessions and move to South America. Fucks given? None. 
just went and did it. Except just wants to be like, or everyone just wants to be liked and accepted. Except for Tim. Tim doesn't give a fuck. So now, while not giving a fuck may seem simple on the surface, it's a whole new bag of burritos under the hood. I don't even know what that sentence means, but I don't give a fuck. A bag of burritos sounded awesome, so let's just go with it. The point is, most of us struggle throughout our lives by giving too many fucks in situations where fucks do not deserve to be given. We give a fuck about the rude gas station attendant who gave us too many nickels. We give a fuck when a show we like was canceled on TV. We give a fuck when our co-workers didn't bother asking us about our awesome weekend. We give a fuck when it's raining and we're supposed to go jogging in the morning. Fucks given everywhere. Strewn about like seeds in motherfucking springtime. And for what purpose? For what reason? Convenience? Easy comforts? A pat on the fucking back, maybe? Well, this is the problem, my friend. Because when we give too many fucks, when we choose to give a fuck about everything, then we feel as though we are perpetually entitled to feel comfortable and happy at all times. That's when life fucks us. Indeed, the ability to reserve our fucks for only the most fuckworthy of situations would surely make life a hell of a lot easier. Failure would be less terrifying. Rejection less painful, unpleasant necessities, more pleasant, and the unsavory shit sandwiches a little bit more savory. I mean, uh, if we could only give a few less fucks, or a few more consciously directed fucks, then life would feel pretty fucking easy. What we didn't realize is that there is a fine art to not fuck giving. People just born people aren't just born not giving a fuck. In fact, we're born giving way too many fucks. Ever watch a kid cry his eyes out because his hat is the wrong shade of blue? Exactly. Fuck that kid. Developing the ability to control and manage the fucks you give is the essence of strength and integrity. We must craft and hone our lack of fuckery over the course of years and decades. Like a fine wine, our fucks must age into a fine vintage, only uncorked and given on the most special fucking occasions. This may sound easy, but it is not. Most of us, most of the time, get sucked in by life's mean trivialities, steamrolled by its unimportant dramas. We live and die by the side note and distractions and vicissitudes that suck the fox out of us like Sasha Gray in the middle of a gangbang. Okay, who's Sasha Gray? Never mind. This is in no way, man, or no way to live, man. So stop fucking around. Get your fucks together. And here, allow me to fucking show you. I'm just going to do this real quick one and then I got to get out of here because I'm just about out of time. Subtlety number one. Not giving a fuck does not mean being indifferent. It means being comfortable with being different. Subtlety number two. Not to not give a fuck about adversity. You must first give a fuck about something more important than adversity. Number three. 
We all have a limited number of fucks to give. Pay attention to where and who you give them. So, he goes on on this. I'm going to go ahead and share this. Please stick around because coming up in about an hour is Grimner and Moose Girl with the Freaker's Ball. Also, be sure to check back with RLM Radio tomorrow because tomorrow morning, actually on UT on UCY, will be Solvenor with the Solvenor event on UCY at 10 o'clock Eastern Time, 9 o'clock Central Time. At 4 o'clock Eastern Time is Kira with the Bridge tomorrow afternoon. And tomorrow evening is Bo Diddy. That's 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, I believe. Uh, Bo Diddy with uh, his bodacious tunage. On Sunday at noon, my time, which is Central Time, or no, noon Eastern Time, 11 o'clock my time, is Grimner with the blues that lead you into Hal Anthony and opening up a can of whoop-ass. So... Be sure to check back often because RLM is the place you want to be to be entertained and enlightened. Thank you all for listening into Grammy's Rocket Chair on this terrible Tax Tuesday. It-